Her triumphs, I took a group of women that didn't believe in themselves and I just believed in them. Her trials, I never wanted to go to practice. I was losing a ton of weight. Her story, I just put my faith in God and just trusted the system. Her why, I want people to see what I did and say, oh, that's so awesome. I'm gonna be better than that. That would be how I hope that this journey ends. This is Her Why, where we tell the stories from BYU women's sports. Here is your host, Lauren McLean. We're so glad you've joined us for Her Why, where we celebrate the women who make BYU sports great. And joining us now is former UVU soccer goalie and BYU women's soccer assistant coach who has her PhD in marriage and family therapy, Tasha Bell. Thanks for being here with me, Tasha. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Good to see you after yeah. a few years. Yeah, it's fun to be back. Fun to see you. And yeah, yeah you've been back and forth between a couple of schools. Yeah. Uh, let's get into it. Tasha, you were hired as an assistant coach last season here mm-hmm. at BYU. So you helped usher in the Big 12 era. This team lost a lot of firepower. It's a young team. From your perspective, from what you've seen, what does this team's near future look like? This team has already, in just a few a few games, a few weeks, shown that they have a lot to prove. They're excited. They're anxious to get out there on the field and to, to get back to a Final Four, get back to a national championship game. And there certainly are growing pains in that, absolutely. Um, but in the near and far future, we are absolutely gunning for a national championship. And wow. there's, you know, some some unfinished business for sure. Um, in terms of actually winning that national championship and, and finishing that. But I, I think that's, you know, that's always the goal that we're, we're building towards, that we're working on. And, and that's, you know, that's the outcome. Obviously, there's a whole process that, you know, fills in there and, and the growing pains. And that's what we're working through right yeah. now. But in terms of where we're headed and what we're, we're working for, it's, it's getting back to that Final Four and winning a national championship for sure. From what I've seen... Very few times does Jen Rock would have to have a rebuilding year. Yeah. that's su- It's such a rare yeah. thing to watch. And so when it does happen, you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm not used to this, right? Yeah. As, a, as a women's soccer fan, BYU women's soccer fan, you're not used to that. But when you look at the, this young team, what's the potential that you see in them? Yeah. I mean, for this season already, even though we're, we've had some tough injuries, yeah, we've had some tough games, um, you know, we kind of feel like, all right, we're finally catching our breath and then we'll get another another injury or mm-hmm. something else will happen. And um, and kind of some weird ones, honestly, you know, like a, a ball to the face that hurts an eye and just different <laughs> things like that where you're kind of like, all right, I've never seen that before yeah. in soccer, but that's all right. We'll, we'll roll with it. But, you know, even despite all those sorts of things, um, you know, we feel really great about where we are in terms of the rankings, in terms of uh, Big 12 play in terms of um, what we can accomplish this year. Um, and so the, the potential of this group specifically, I think, is is uh, there's a lot, a lot that they're going to do. Um, and we're, we're really excited for that, really excited for them, excited for, you know, some of them have been waiting for this opportunity for a little while behind that big senior right. class. And uh, some have been on missions and different things. And so they've just been patiently waiting and they are ready to go. So. I, I'm curious because with all these strange injuries that have been happening, yeah. I'm sure a lot of the women are just super discouraged. With your background yeah. in therapy and counseling, how are you able to help them kind of get back to where they need to be? Yeah. I mean, first and foremost, I have to give a huge shout out to the, the, the mental health and the mental strength staff that BYU has surrounded us with. So Braden Brown and Dr. Bobby and Holly, and we've just got Craig Manning, you know, some incredible, incredible people who, who do good things. And so most of the time, if I'm being honest, I try to leave it to them. Um, but every now and again, I think, you know, my role is to kind of just throw in some little nuggets here yeah. and there, and, and hopefully they'll, they're helpful and, and just kind of help us reset and regroup. You know, those, um, our, our mental strength and our mental health people aren't, you know, they're not out on the field with us and traveling with us. And so there are some opportunities there. You know, whether it's when we're cooling down or we're doing a little meditation or visualizing or some things like that, um, or just on the field or in individual conversations, just, uh, you know, I don't know that it's super different than what coaches do. I just might be able to pull up an article and show right. you where the research <laughs> comes from. But um, but it's it's mostly just kind of, you know, most yeah. good coaches are kind of doing it already, honestly. So We had goalie Lynette Hernandez on the show last year, and she didn't start – 
She wasn't the starting goalkeeper last year, but she took over late in the year and is the starter now. What progress mm-hmm. have you seen in Lynette over this last year? Lynette has come on. I mean, it's actually been really amazing to watch her. Um, she and I both came to BYU about the same time. And, you know, so coming back from a mission is just a really interesting, unique challenge. Um, it, it takes, there's so many aspects of sport and physical ability that just takes a long time to come back. So, you know, a lot of people talk about like this advantage of having an older player, but they don't see the hours and hours and hours it takes to get your fitness back, your agility back, your strength back and, and your explosiveness Mm -hmm. and just all these different things. You know, if I go all the way back to when Lynette's coming off a mission and she, you know, it had been COVID year before she left and some different things. So it had been a while since she had really played and to where she is now, I mean, that's an incredible jump, right? She's she's confident. She's she's getting out there. Uh, even in just this season, we've challenged her to be a little bit more assertive and come off her line and help us clean up some things. And uh, we have a little bit different back line. You know, Leveni Vaca and Izzy Stratton um, played played our our back line and those back positions a little bit differently. And and this line, we're challenging them to stay a little bit higher, which opens a little bit more space in behind them. And so Lynette has to be pretty active coming off her line and, and willing to come be brave and pick up some mm. of those balls. And that's, you know, that's been a shift for her, honestly, I think, even from last year. And so when she's playing with all these different players in front of her, she has to play her position a different way. And so even in just this last season um, or in just these last few weeks, we've seen her her grow and, and rise to the challenge and 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 then just as a leader, right? And so she's she's definitely stepped up in her communication and organizing the team and uh, keeping us t- together and compact. And with such a young team, that is a lot of work, you mm. know. I think last year, Lava and Izzy were probably telling Lynette what to right. do. Right? <laughs> she's like, please help yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and this year, Lynette's coaching a whole back line and and a whole team. So she's she's grown a lot. She's a really amazing person. Well, she has the personality to do it. Absolutely. That's for sure. She's a leader, Absolutely. that girl. She is. Absolutely. And, and I actually love that she has you as a return missionary yourself. You yeah. in Chicago. Yeah. We'll get to that a little bit. but And you were a goalkeeper yourself. Yeah. So does she rely on you a lot for advice? And Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. You'd have to ask her. I, yeah. I, I couldn't say. But I think I hope we have a good relationship, you know, and we spend a lot of time together, obviously. Um, you know, most days we're, we're training together and. And yeah, I remember having some conversations with her when she was coming back from her mission and, you know, she's, she's frustrated or anxious and I, I know I play better than this. Yeah. And it's like, well, that was a year and a half ago. <laughs> you're well, you're you totally know? different. Now. Yeah. And I under, you know, so I think having, yeah, some of that understanding and, and just those conversations with her and, um, but it's been a lot of fun. She's so much fun to work with. All of our goalkeepers, um, Kelsey and Peyton are also awesome. So it's a really fun goalkeeper or goalkeeper unit this year. We have a really good time together. So I can't imagine coming off a mission because I served a mission as well. Yeah. I'm like 15 pounds heavier yeah. than you were before. <laughs> yeah. And then being thrown into like Division One, yeah. one of the best teams in the entire country. It's yeah. Like, good luck. Yeah. And make sure you're, you're at your physical peak. And yeah, yeah. anyway, it's, I yeah. feel like people probably don't quite understand how difficult, definitely people outside of this LDS culture right. do not understand how difficult that yeah. is. Because you see it with the football team as well, right? Oh, yeah. they're oh, older. Absolutely. Turn missionaries. And yeah. maybe the mental side yeah. is better. Yeah. But the physical side is mm-hmm. is definitely worse. I mean, you're still growing at that time of life. Yeah, and, true. You know, there's so you come back like a different person, mm-hmm. physically, mentally, emotionally, all these different ways, right? And and it's just it's a lot to come back from a mission. And even you know, even like right now this year, we have some ACLs on our team, but they they're doing rehab that entire nine months. They're doing rehab, and so you know, certainly a month after they've had surgery, they're not running or on the alter G or, you know, doing some of those sorts of things. But, you know, eventually they start getting into that and they're running a little bit and they're kicking the soccer ball around. And when you go on a mission, I mean, you know, you get your 30 minutes in the morning and (laughs) that's not enough, you know, to be a D1 athlete, right? It's not enough. So it's a, it's a big, it's a big hurdle to, to overcome for sure. So it's pretty amazing what those, those young kids do. Mm -hmm. And for the trainers that help them get that. (laughs) Yeah. You've been a student at BYU uh, getting your master's degree. Yeah. 
uh, an employee and a soccer coach at BOU before yeah. accepting a job with Jen Rockwood again last year. What keeps you coming back to Provo? <laughs> yeah, I hope. I mean, I've gone back and forth to UVU and back and forth to BYU. I kind of, I mean, I love University of Minnesota, nothing against it, but I hope I don't have to go back to <laughs> University of Minnesota. Um, it's a little colder there. <laughs> I bet it is. Whoa, and that's uh, hard to do. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, it's, uh, anyway, so uh, BYU is a special school. Obviously, you know, we, we hear it all the time. We talk about it all the time. But just incredible to have, uh, you know, now as a student, as an employee, as a coach, to have these experiences so closely connected to the gospel of Jesus Christ and to, you know, be able to talk about your testimony and others' testimony. I mean, really, you know, I think the girls probably strengthened my faith more than I strengthened theirs. And, you know, you see that all throughout campus. And it's just, it's an incredible experience, right? To to talk about those things and to see, you know, to sometimes, you know, see the savior as a soccer coach and what would mm. he do? And, and just, and that maybe sounds a little, a little weird or a little different, but I think uh, one of the things I've, I've learned or I've tried to learn, or maybe Heavenly Father's trying to teach me and I'm not learning, but um, I think he cares about all these different things we're doing, you know? And so whether it's been as a, a counselor and, and, praying about or hoping to help them or as a soccer coach or as a student, you know, I've, it's, it's been amazing to see his hand in those different roles. Right. And Mm -hmm. for some reason, it just seems like, certainly I felt that, you know, at at UVU and at Minnesota, but you can talk a little bit more openly about it here. And, and that's a pretty neat, unique thing. So incredible. The mission of BYU. It's a lot of fun to be a part of. We've heard from players about what it's like playing for Jen Rockwood. You've had the unique experience of working for her now two different times. What's it like working with a woman who many consider as a women's soccer legend? Absolutely a legend, yeah. (laughs) Every day you walk into the office and you see all her trophies and how many times she's finished in the top 25 and just all the things she's accomplished. I mean, her office is like amazing you know you just walk into her everybody should it should be part of the BYU tour to walk into Jen Rockwood's <laughs> office because you're just you know you're in the presence of greatness really and uh, it's incredible I mean the longevity especially in college sports people ask me all the time how long I think I'm going to be at BYU and it's it's like nobody knows I yeah. don't know if you follow college sports yeah. at all but <laughs> I mean it could be tomorrow it could be five years it could mm-hmm. be you know it could be whatever and so uh, for for somebody to be you know, obviously has to be an incredible coach to be in the game so long and to be at the same school so long. Um, Just absolutely phenomenal human being and great person, really cares about her players, really cares about the game of soccer, really cares about the college community, and um, just, yeah, absolute legend for sure. I When I first started sidelining women's soccer, Mm -hmm. I was terrified (laughs) of Jen Rockwood. I I don't think I've ever told her that, but I'm like, Oh my gosh! You I and me so, both. Yeah, <laughs> and some of the players have said that too. Yeah, like they yeah. were just so intimidated by her. Which, yeah. but it's funny yeah. now looking back and knowing her a little better. I'm like, oh, she's she's incredible. Yeah. And she's warm and she's funny. Yeah. But definitely, when you first meet her, you're yeah. like, and and I'm sure part of that is has to do with, I mean, she was she's the pioneer of, of yeah. BYU women's soccer, For and so sure. you're just a little intimidated by that, but. Yeah. She is. She's incredible. Yeah. Definitely she's, a little intimidating. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Still, you know, I mean, <laughs> she yeah. Is. Uh, same thing. When you walk into the office, you're like, okay, I'm in the presence of greatness and I better have it together. I, I better know what I'm doing. Yeah, here, yeah. Gonna, yeah exactly. better, a little bit better posture. <laughs> yeah. We're going to detail how you got back to BOU again in a minute, but, but after everything you've been through in your life, are you a little surprised that you ended up back at BOU as a soccer coach? Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, first of all, the BYU soccer staff – you know, part of this is Jen, but I mean, you know, the movement in that staff has been so limited. I mean, so limited, you know, it was her and Chris Walken for years and years and years. And, um, so, I mean, it just there, you know, in her 30 year career, she just hasn't had that, that much changeover, which is, which is another testament to her. Right. I mean, people are changing and moving all the time and, um, she's obviously great to work with and people want to be here. And so I really never, um, never, you just never, th- I never thought the chance would open up if I'm mm. being honest, right? Mm. They're just, and it's, it's kind of the way that I got here is pretty, pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, so I, I just feel very blessed, very fortunate and, um, yeah, directed to, to be here and, and grateful that Jen gave me the opportunity for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get into that a little yeah, later because sure. I want to hear that story. <laughs> As we mentioned, you're a former Wolverine goalkeeper. And you also you played soccer at Davis High School. What mm-hmm. made you decide you were going to play soccer at UVU? 
Oh, that's a good question. Man, this is, wow, I'm feeling old. I have not thought about these things <laughs> for like, a long 20 time. 20 years ago, let's, yeah. let's go back. I'd actually had a couple of bad injuries, um, I guess. I can't even remember now if it was senior year or junior year, and had kind of um, some so- shoulder problems. And so I just wasn't really sure that college soccer was going to be where I wanted to go mm-hmm. and if I was kind of done playing and maybe like a little bit burned out. So, you know, then, but then, you know, got connected with, um, with UVU and, um, and just thought at the last minute, just kind of thought, you know what, like, why not give it a chance? Right. You know, if I don't, if I'm, if I'm still struggling with injuries and if I don't like it after a year, you know, I actually was, you know, I had been accepted to BYU and in the process of all Hmm. of this. And so, um, had been accepted to some other schools and was thinking about other things and, and yeah. And so, you know, at the last one, I was like, I'll just try it for a year. Like I can always transfer, I can do different things, but you can't, you know, if you kind of miss the window when yeah. you, you know, for, for, uh, college sports. And so, yeah, I just thought I'd give it a try and, and then it ended up working out. So, um, and yeah, now it's like my whole life has been set on this track, you know, <laughs> you wonder what would have happened if you, if I hadn't have done that, but yeah, so it's been good. Crazy how life works that yeah, way. Yeah, absolutely. You started 10 games as a goalkeeper your freshman year in 2004. We are going back here. <laughs> yeah. You had 34 saves in those 10 games. Looking back at it 20 years later, how yeah. does that make you feel? Uh, <laughs> how did you feel about that first season? Yeah, so I, if my memory serves, um, I was not expecting to play. Uh, I think our, our the goalkeeper ahead of me got hurt. And um, so, you know, I was a little bit, and I think a lot of times our freshmen are, goalkeepers are kind of like, I'm just in learning mode and yeah. having fun mode and that sort of thing. And so, um, yeah, it was, it was kind of, it was a little bit of being thrown into the fire and, and, you know, definitely the level raises right in, in college sports. And so it was a lot of fun though. It was a good time. A lot of fun. You played in 27 games over the next two years, and then you decide to serve a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. After three years of playing soccer, what made you decide to stop for 18 months and serve a mission? That is Brent Anderson's fault, for sure. (laughs) So, um, Yeah, so Brent Anderson, that's an assistant coach here at at BYU now, was my coach at UVU. And, and, you know, at that time, again, we're going back, at that time, mission age was 21. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, if you're going to serve, most people, most most girls were served, you know, you'd play two, maybe three years, and then you'd go on a mission. And I had kind of, you know, like people are like, would you ever serve a mission? And I was like, yeah, I'm thinking about it. And in a very, you know, I'd say that and I meant it in a very like, you know, off in the sky (laughs) kind of a thing, thinking about it. Right. And something something happened. I was in Brent's office. Some some of the girls and I were in Brent's office and somebody asked me that question. It was after the season. And somebody asked me that question, and I was like, yeah, I don't know, like maybe. And Brent, we had actually just had another goalkeeper go on a mission, and so we had two left, and Brent looked at me very seriously and was like, Tasha, if you're going on a mission, I have to know next week. <laughs> oh, my god! Because I have to get – I have to recruit, and i got to find another goalkeeper. And yeah. he wasn't joking, you know. Yeah. He's like, I have to know next week. And so finally somebody put a deadline to it, right? And so I was like, oh, well, I – guess I better go like pray about this and figure this out and a month later I had a mission call wow yeah so in a week I told him I think I I think I avoided him for I I pushed it to like a week and two days or something (laughs) I avoided him a little bit and then um but yeah so I told him I was going and then yeah I think it took me two weeks to get um you know wisdom to fold and papers done and and then had had a call a week or two later. So anyway, yeah. So I blame it squarely on that's Brent's, Brent's fault. fault. Yeah, that's on his shoulders. So, that's wow to put yeah. a deadline to it like that. Yeah, Woo, yeah that does exactly. put the pressure. On. So you were called to serve in Chicago uh-huh. in a Spanish speaking mission, yeah. which was yeah. really cool. Yeah. Um, looking back, how would you? How do you? Uh, this is hard to put into words, but sure. like, are you glad you made that decision? To put yeah. soccer to, on the side and to go serve a mission. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, and look, let, let's be honest here. UVU soccer when I was playing is not what UVU soccer is now, yeah. and and so you know, it's not like I was some amazing goalkeeper, right? But even even still, with that, um, I just think missions are such an incredible opportunity and experience, and um, there's nothing. I I just I can't personally think of anything like it you know I mean you know how it is right Mm -hmm. it's so special and it's such a unique time 
and spiritually and personally and and your understanding of the world and and your place in it and there's just so much that comes from those opportunities that are just so incredibly unique that I mean I would I would do it over again in a heartbeat I still have dreams I don't know if you ever have dreams and I've been called again yeah yeah like (laughs) oh yeah don't get me wrong I was homesick every day of my mission like I worked hard and I did all the things but I I mean like I'm a homebody I love being home so it was hard it was the hard you know Kalani has a uh, Coach Tataki has a, uh, you know, he says, I don't know if it's a famous saying, it's famous in my mind because he's famous, <laughs> but he says, you know, it's the best two years because it's the hardest two years, mm. right? So uh, absolutely is the hardest two years, but there's just nothing like it. Nothing can replace it, you know? So as hard as it is to work with it uh, as coaches, it's, I mean, absolutely an experience that whoever gets that answer, for sure go for it, you know? So We, we just interviewed... Um the current center on the football team, Connor Pay. Oh, yeah. And yeah. his brother, Trevor, about this. And, and he's like a mission prep teacher right now. But he said oh, this, wow. this cracked me up because he's like, he said, I think the biggest secret about a mission is you have like 50 really great days. Yeah. And the other 500 are just so crappy. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, so that's true. what they don't tell you. Yeah. But he said, that's what carries over into life yeah. is you you learn how to work really hard. And it's just a totally. grind. And yep. to, to get to those really good moments. But yeah. I'm like, that was probably one of the best it, descriptions. Oh. So during your senior season, 2009, you helped your team win the conference. So that was directly right after your mission. Did what you learned on your mission help you accomplish what you did, do you think, your senior season? Yeah, you are making me sound way cooler than I am <laughs> and way better than I was. So, um, no, absolutely. I mean, the the mission just, like, the life lessons from a mission, again, you can't find that anywhere else, right? And so, yeah, coming back into senior season, <clears throat> the same thing. It was a lot of work, and, and actually that, that year there, was, there were two keepers, and we were kind of trading back and forth. She had been there, and I had left and gone on a mission, and so... Um, it took a little while to kind of earn the spot. It took a few weeks. I, I don't remember how many games, but it took a little while to earn the spot. And, and you know, you just, you know, I mean, what we're talking about, right? There's some bad days in there. And, uh, you know, as a goalkeeper, if you have a bad game, everybody knows it. Yeah. You know, there's there's not really hiding from that and, and those sorts of things. And so picking yourself back up and, you know, staying confident and hanging in there through the hard times and that sort of stuff. And then absolutely, you know, there were already some great team leaders, you know, as you leave and then come back, it's, you know, you're not necessarily stepping into like a captain role or something like that. So there were some great team leaders, but, you know, being able to just be a part of that team and, and follow in their footsteps and, and it was a lot of fun. It was a great time at the, at the time, the great West had schools the conference championship was on the east coast it was in new jersey wow. so it was a lot of fun at uvu we traveled the country it literally. was to prep you for 20 years yeah. later in the big 12 yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah the conferences of today right yeah. coast to coast so yeah so cool you received your bachelor's degree in 2011 from uvu in behavioral sciences then you joined the wolverine soccer staff as a volunteer how, how did you make ends meet <laughs> yeah. during that time yeah <laughs> so yeah i started i was still doing some school at first and then, so I was kind of still a student and FAFSA was awesome. You know, I finally was off my parents' taxes and things like that. <laughs> um, and I joke, but I think it's probably true. I probably did like six years worth of classes in my undergrad because I changed my major so many times. So I was just still living the student life, if I'm yeah. being totally honest, you know, and then eventually went full time with, with Brent as a coach once I finally finished classes. So, yeah. And even that, you know, I mean that's the life of soccer you coach a little club and you figure out how to make ends meet but you know all right we're going to take a quick break but when we come back tasha talks about becoming a different kind of coach after receiving her phd in family social science this is her why Hey everyone, it's Lauren McLean. If you're anything like me and can't seem to get enough of BYU athletes or the inspiring things they're doing, check out the Deep Blue podcast. Host Jason Shepard sits down with the Cougs' most beloved coaches and athletes, diving deep into their triumphs, failures, and lives. Each episode offers a unique behind-the-scenes look at the personal stories that have shaped these incredible individuals, from their early beginnings to their standout moments on and off the field. You'll hear about their faith, their families, and the lessons they've learned along the way, making it easier to cheer for them not only as athletes, but as human beings. Deep Blue is about much more than just sports. It's about life, resilience, and the journey that makes each athlete and coach a true cougar. Whether you're a diehard BYU fan or just love a good story, Deep Blue has something for you. So don't miss out. Listen to Deep Blue on the BYU Radio app or wherever you get your podcasts. (laughs) 
Welcome back to Her Why. I'm Lauren McLean with BYU Women's Assistant Soccer Coach Tasha Bell. So you graduate in behavioral studies from UVU, and you're helping to coach your alma mater. When did you decide to go for your master's degree? Yeah, so, uh, um, you know, an assistant women's soccer coach is not like a a well-paying job. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, it, it's gotten better, obviously, and this is back in the day again. Right. The theme of this pod or this episode today has been old. Um, back but in the day. Yeah, back in the day. Anyway, so I just had kind of um, coaching is is a tough job to do as a mom, and um, and not that it can't be done. There are incredible mom coaches out there. We have some at BYU, and they do an amazing job raising their children and coaching teams. And but I just kind of felt like like a, a you know a behavioral studies degree is. Not sure what that's going to be, you know, in terms of a job and sort of thing. So I felt like I needed to get my master's degree. So after a couple of years of uh, coaching soccer full time with with Brent Anderson at UVU, yeah, decided to go back and sort of stayed on kind of in that part time role yeah. as an assistant coach with with uh, UVU while I was doing my master's degree. So that was a lot of fun and it's fun to be at BYU. That's my BYU experience um, as a student. It was all almost all in the john taylor building which is kitty corner from the creamery so when people ask me where things are on campus i'm like i don't know i all of my classes were in this one building basically off campus yeah. by the elementary school you know so you're like i can tell you exactly where the creamery yeah, is. yeah yeah you yes. know. So i went there every day for sure yeah. <laughs> but don't ask me anything else yeah well then after you graduate from BYU with a degree in marriage and family therapy you decide to get your doctorate at the university of minnesota yeah and also help out with their soccer team yeah How were you able to balance all of that? Yeah, it was really fun. So when I was interviewing for schools, I had finished it. Well, I'll back up. I'd finished it at uh, BYU, finished up my master's degree and was thinking, you know, okay, so I had done this because I I wanted a good mom job and I thought this would be a great mom job and I still wasn't married and I'm still not married. So that part of it hasn't worked out for me yet. Maybe it will. Um, But anyway, so I was like, well, I'm not married if I'm going to do a PhD, this is the time to do it. Like, let's, let's go, let's do it. And so I started interviewing at schools and I pretty much only interviewed at schools that had soccer programs that I thought I could, Hmm. could be a part of. And so as I was interviewing and reaching out to marriage and family therapy programs, I also reached out to soccer staffs. And in a lot of the interviews I went and did, I, I also, found time to meet with the soccer staffs and so that was um that was a lot of fun and that was a good experience for me just kind of reaching out essentially cold calling or cold emailing these people and you know trying to work my contacts and things and and see kind of what was out there at these schools that had good marriage and family therapy programs and and so um it worked out it's kind of amazing that it did a lot of the the really top-notch marriage and family therapy programs are um kind of in these like schools that like Kansas state at the time was just starting a soccer program Mm. and kind of these, I don't know, like not, I don't know. They were big schools, but in kind of country towns, I guess, Mm -hmm. like smaller towns, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, So Minneapolis was kind of, or Minnesota university of Minnesota and Minneapolis was sort of the, it was a little different, right? Like I went to the um, singles ward and it was actually a ward and not a branch, you know, and Mm -hmm. it had, you know, it had some, had some good membership to it and things like that. So anyway, so that's kind of how I ended up at Minnesota. I thought, I was like, I'm from Utah. The winters won't be that bad there. (laughs) They're that bad. They're, they're another level. So yeah. So then, you know, you're doing a PhD and I had like the coolest PhD chair. So kind of the professor that I worked with the most, his name is Steve Harris and he's awesome. And still is. He and I have a great relationship. We talk all the time and he was Mm -hmm. so good to work with me. You know, if I wouldn't have had somebody like that, that was willing to, you know, that knew that I kind of had these these two passions in life, uh, there's no way I, w- I could have done it. So it's sort of a miracle because the way their practices worked out and the way that our class worked out, I was really able to be there for a lot of things and ended up kind of filling a few different roles for them at, uh, at the University of Minnesota. And um, it was really It was, uh, you know, it was a little bit like a mission for me. It was really hard three years, but um, so much growth uh, there. So anyway, now I'm getting into things you haven't even asked me about. But But uh, I want to. (laughs) But I want to know, how did you change as a person during that time? That was so difficult. You were filling all these different roles. How do you feel like that changed you? Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's a really interesting thing, marriage and family therapy, or really any kind of mental health degree, I think. Um, I sort of joke that, you know, my guess is that law students feel like they're in a courtroom 
all the time they're in class, whenever they're in class and doctors feel like they're in, you know, a surgery room or whatever. And so, um, as a, as a therapy student, you either are in therapy or you're doing therapy on someone. So kind of the whole, all day, you're just like in this introspective kind of mode Mm -hmm. and, you know, what, what's, what's, why do I act the way I act and Mm -hmm. what's happening here and why is this person acting that way? And so it was, it was a really cool, interesting experience to kind of have this simultaneous coaching and then academic experience where you're talking about why people do the things they do and why they think the way they think. And, and then at the same time, I actually, this is when at Minnesota is when I started to really look into essentially what I would call like sports therapy and sport performance. And so I had, you know, connected with Tom Golightly, who's, who's been a big, big name here at BYU and is now working with the Royals and RSL and, um, and anyway, got connected with him. And so I, I essentially did, I call it a minor in, uh, mental performance at university mm-hmm. of Minnesota. It's not official yeah. or formal or anything, but so I added on some, some extra classes in the kinesiology department and things like that. So it was just a really fascinating time. Cause you know, you go to class and you talk about something and then I'd go to soccer and I'd see it play out in front of my yeah. eyes. Right. And, um, or, you know, I'd have a conversation with a student who was really struggling with something at home or with their family or a dating relationship. And, you know, it's like, Oh, I just read about that, yeah, you know, let me tell yeah. You. <laughs> yeah. Which they mostly don't want to hear, you know, <laughs> which is fine. I learned that lesson. I learned that lesson, <laughs> but it's just interesting to sort of see kind of like, you know, for it to become live, right? What you're talking about, what you're studying, what you're researching sort of plays out in front of you. And and so that was a really interesting time that way, for sure. That's yeah. cool. You yeah. must have all your stuff together because no, for no, three years you're receiving therapy basically every <laughs> <Yeah>. day. <laughs> yeah, something like that, something like that. The, the BYU, pro- I mean, so I'll say five years because BYU, the master's program is the same way. And they're actually... They're a, such a good marriage and family therapy program. If somebody happens to be listening to this and yeah. is considering it, they're really good. But, cool. man, they really push you at BYU for sure. And once you get to your Ph.D., they're kind of like, okay, it's a little bit more research-focused and things right. like that. But in your master's degree, they're always so asking crazy. you questions and, <laughs> you know. What they happened in you your stuff. childhood? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my <laughs> yeah. gosh. You know. That's crazy. I never really thought about that. Yeah. So was your first job after the University of Minnesota a recruiting coordinator for BYU? Was yeah. that Was that directly after your PhD? Yeah. So actually, I wasn't even done with my PhD. Okay. So I, um, like I said, I'm a bit of a homebody. I, I do love traveling and, and things like that, but I just really, I, I'm really connected with my family. So I wasn't done with my PhD, but again, my professor, Steve Harris, super great guy, um, I just, I had had this opportunity with football come up and he just made it work and we figured wow. it out and, um, and it took me a little bit longer to finish my dissertation and things and it probably would have if I had stayed in Minnesota, but he was great about it. He was awesome and, and just knew it was a big opportunity and that I had to jump at it. And so I, so I did. Yeah. It was awesome. Was it more than recruiting that you did? Yeah. The so, team? yeah. So my title there, that was kind of the deal with them is I was like, look, uh, you know, recruiting school, that's yeah. great. And I have this whole, you know, psychology background right. or mental health background and sport performance background. And so um, part of my title was player performance. And, and so I did a little bit there with them, right? They, um, we did, you know, some, some meeting with their leadership and just different things like that. And so that was really fun. Met with that's some cool. of the guys individually and things like that. So that was a lot of fun. It was a good job. It was, uh, I learned a lot, right? I learned a lot. So good time. You also practice as a marriage and family therapist on the side yeah, while yeah. here at BYU. What was yeah. it like going from helping athletes to uh-huh. helping families? Yeah, it's a, it's a, a, such a weird, I feel like a jack of a few trades and a master <laughs> of no trades. Um, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. But because it is, it's kind of like in, in my private practice, I have two clients, either couples or athletes, you know, mm-hmm. so I'll work with high school athletes or uh, maybe some athletes from some of the other schools. And then actually still part of my role here at BYU is to work with some of the student athletes mm-hmm. here. Um, I'm kind of, I call myself the overflow therapist. So <laughs> if they get too full, if the other therapists get too full, then um, I'll meet with some of the, some of the student athletes here. So it's, yeah, it's kind of an interesting, um, I'll say this, there are high performance psychology is, it's really interesting. There's um, athletes, I think is what a lot of us think of, 
but a lot of CEOs and business people, it's, it's essentially for high performers, right? So there's military, like when I go to these conferences of sport performance, there'll be like a military branch and there'll be an athlete branch and a business, like high performer business branch and um, arts and music and, you know, theater type mm-hmm, people, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's just, it's uh, it's kind of more evolved into, I would say, high performers. Mm. And mine happens to be... Um, uh, with athletes, but I also branched out a little bit into working with uh, some business people and some things like that. So that's been really fun to just sort of see high performers in, in different areas. And yeah. I haven't done a lot of it, but yeah, just small private practice. So it's that's fun. cool. Yeah. And do you feel like it's essential? I see some of these, like the athletes at the Olympics. Yeah. And mentally, I mean, yeah. we just interviewed Whitney. Yeah. Whitney Orton Morgan. Yeah. And mentally, I'm like, how yeah. do you do this? Yeah. You have all eyes on you. You have all this pressure. You have crazy people on social media saying stuff about Absolutely. you. You know, like there's these, and and that's at a huge scale than you have here at BYU where you have similar things on a smaller scale. But do you almost think it's essential to have this therapy for high performance athletes? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, our world has just changed drastically, you know, in terms of like, I didn't have a cell phone. I grew up again, we're back to how old I am, but you know, I didn't have a cell phone until college, you know, like, and I don't think I had social media, you know, I mean like, but what Facebook was, you know, probably after that even, I don't know. Right. Like my, anyway, so the world just has changed so much. And, you know, anytime I turned on the Olympics, I felt like, and maybe it was just cause I was watching for it, but you saw an athlete, you know, palm on horse guy, right? Yeah. And <laughs> you see an athlete just sitting there and trying to focus and get in the zone. And then it's it was always fascinating to me to see just how different athletes approach like the walkout, right? Mm-hmm. You know, track and field, they yeah. get announced and they walk out and sometimes they're, you know, really amped up and sometimes they're, they've got their headphones on, they don't want to hear anything. And so just seeing how, how different people are approaching that. And then, you know, so you see it on TV, but then working with athletes here at BYU and yeah, maybe a different scale or a different level. Um, but, you know, like nobody was watching my soccer at UVA. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, like two people, right? You know, my mom and dad, you know, that's it. And um but now it's just there is so much happening out there, right? And and social media and um so many great things, which is awesome. It gives so much exposure to sports, right? Mm-hmm. And to the uh, amazing incredible things that people are doing, but it definitely adds another layer of pressure and and so I think our world's sort of trying to manage that a little bit and figure that all out and, you know, while also trying to live life. And yeah. that was already hard enough. Right. right? So, um, yeah. So I think it's be- become very essential to kind of have both sides of, you know, some mental health and then also some some sport performance and kind of how are you managing your mind within these games and practices yeah. and different things for sure. These athletes yeah. have to be mentally tougher than what Absolutely. we were. Absolutely. Yeah. While you were a part-time therapist and working at BYU, you accepted a position as an assistant soccer coach at UVU. What made you want to get back into yeah. coaching at your alma mater? Yeah. Oh, man. So I had, yeah, so I was I had worked for the football team for a year and then for a couple of years was working as um, a mental health counselor for the student athletes. And so I was having a lot of fun with that. Good time. And then I just really missed coaching and want to get back into it. So I first was at UVU for about a year as their volunteer coach. And then same thing. They just, they had somebody leave and, um, he called me. I was shocked. I had no idea. I had no idea that the coach, um, what actually happened is Kyle Beckerman got hired at UVU for mm-hmm. the men's team and his good friend, Seth was on UVU staff. And so Seth went over to Kyle's side and I just had no idea. I don't know. I probably didn't even know that Kyle was being hired at the time. Actually. I don't mm-hmm. think I knew any of that. And, um, so yeah, he called me and I was super surprised. Chris LeMay did. And, and that was a tough decision because it, it was really fun to be here at BYU and, and the mental health job, it had a lot of fun components. I also taught classes and did workshops and some group things and then also did individual therapy and, you know, it's just working with athletes all day. And so it's a, it's a, that is a great job. Um, I wouldn't be sad if, you know, one day I have to end up back in, in it, that would be okay hmm. too. Um, but there's something different about coaching, you know, and there's something about being kind of in the trenches with the team, with the staff and, and it's just a ton of fun. And again, it's kind of one of those things where you feel like, you know, if you pass up the opportunity, there's a really good chance it might not come again. Right. Um, and especially, you know, 
I, I really like being close to family, like I, I've said five times. So uh, <laughs> there's probably some mental issue there that I need to work on. But <laughs> anyway, so, you know. For, I know a girl. <laughs> yeah. Help me out. So to be able to stay in Utah and coach college sports, that was that was really cool for me. So, yeah, jumped at it and went for it and had a couple of good years there. Great years there. Yeah. Well, now I'm excited to hear because you kind of teased <laughs> it at the beginning of the interview. Because yeah. then in 2023, you were hired to coach here at BYU again. Yeah. How did that all come about? Because you said it was kind oh, of a crazy gosh. story. Yeah, no, unbelievable. So I had had a um, Maddie, Maddie Sidaway Gates, a former player at BYU, and then she's done some mental strength um, stuff here at BYU, specifically with the women's soccer team, and it's just awesome. Um, and she, her and I kind of connected in December, and we just had a conversation. We were just kind of talking about some mental strength stuff, and and at that time she was like, would you ever, would you ever come coach at BYU? And I was like, Maddie, there's no way that staff never changes, yeah. you know, like, like, yeah, I mean, that'd be cool, but there's no way. Right. And, um, and then maybe like four weeks later, middle of January, um, J- Jen reached out to me and just said, Hey, we, we want to move Brent into, you know, free up some of his time to do more of the team stuff. So we need somebody to help us with the goalkeepers. Would you ever be interested and at the time, it was a volunteer position. I was like, Jen, <laughs> yeah, you, you can't, everybody that's listening, you can't see Lauren's face, but that's exactly how I felt. It's like, oh, Jen, I'm, you know, this is a full time job and benefits and everything. And that's a, you know, that's a tough sell. But the NCAA literally that week was voting on the ability to add a coaching staff. So the NCAA limits how many coaches right. each team can have, right? And that week, they were voting on being able to add a staff member to each coaching staff. And so she said, well, why don't you, let's wait and see what happens with this vote in a couple of days and then let's reconnect and go from there. And they passed it like wow. shockingly. Yeah, they passed it. And um, which I wasn't I, nobody really knew if it was going to pass or not. You know, they they're voting on stuff all the time. And so they passed it. So that was one hurdle. And then the next hurdle was convincing BYU to add a staff member position to it that can take a minute yeah yeah so (laughs) uh, yeah it was kind of a miracle that it all worked out but it's uh I'm glad to be here glad it did wow yeah and I'm sure everyone is so glad that you're here I don't know Jen might have her regrets every (laughs) every now and again (laughs) you've coached athletes families and yourself why is coaching people so rewarding to you you know the the ability for humans and for people to change and to become something better I just think is so cool you know and to to, to be able to just watch that, you know, I, th- I think in most of my roles, my part in that is pretty small, all things considered. Um, but to just kind of have an inside view into that and to watch that and particularly in groups, right? You know, there's a lot of different ways to do therapy. I really like doing therapy with more than just one mm. person in the room, right? And I like coaching. I coach a, a team sport and to see that what somebody can do when they're a part of something that's bigger than themselves and, and to see how... Um, you know, <clears throat> the the whole is greater than the sum of the parts and, and see that all come together is just such a cool experience. You know, every time it kind of leaves me in awe and and seeing somebody change and and work on something or go after something or set a goal, you know, I think, um, you know, for me, that's that's a lot of what the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about, right, is change and growth and becoming better you know and becoming something something more that we could ever become on our own right because we're uh, connected with our savior and with our heavenly father and and so i think it's just such a cool part of life to be able to to see people challenge themselves and go for something and it's it's pretty awesome i love that so much i'm here with byu assistant women's soccer coach tasha bell and mental health coach thank you so much for taking the time you are incredible oh you're so kind i, I love so that we fun. reconnected and yeah. I, we got to have you on here. absolutely thanks for having me so fun you bet thanks to annie robinson and sydney simpson for producing this episode with senior producer cleon wall her why is a production of byu radio 